Good morning. Unloaded here in Everett. Okay, which way do I want to go? Take the ramp on the left to I-5 North. Toward I want to go 5 Vancouver, North, BC. okay. I'm not sure where we're going, Garmin. Because I want to go I-5 South. But you're going to lead me across the bridge, turn around, and then come back south? Okay, let's do that. Nothing is defogging because I don't have the fan on. Like my window's just staying fogged up. What's going on here? Let's get let's get some defog going on here. There, that's better. It's starting to clear up. Whew. I'm like, what is going on? I'm confused. Oh, fan's not on. Much better. So yeah, I didn't have my dispatch where I was going, so they unloaded me here like at 6 in the morning, I could go on duty. And then I had to sit here half an hour off duty after unloading, waiting for my next dispatch. That's one of the things that always bothers me, this company. It'd be nice if they gave me a dispatch, tomorrow's dispatch, today. If today I knew where I was headed tomorrow, that'd be super handy. So now we're going to drive over 300 miles empty to Spokane. Turn left at the traffic light. wanted to go it's like uh, I, was, I was starting to hit the brakes I'm like if you're going put the power divider lock on and the roads are slippery I was spinning the tires a bit all right south on I-5 I know the power divider locks locked I locked it. Continue on I five. Get up to speed. It's gonna feel fast first thing in the morning. And then we'll take uh, the four oh five around Seattle, take I ninety all the way to Spokane. I was debating taking two to Wenatchee and then I'm going to work my way through that way. I think this way is better. I think. Oh yeah, I know where we are. Okay. 
I recognize this place now from this angle. I'm like, oh yeah. So I was driving down those roads over there. I delivered to the buildings here on the left-hand side. Right-hand side? Left, passenger side, right-hand side. Right-hand side, yeah, that side. <laughs> delivered in there, okay. It's five minutes faster taking Highway 2, but I have it set for. Here we avoid Seattle. But I 90 is faster speed. Because I have it set for a load here, so. We go to empty mode. That'll that'll cut a lot more than five minutes off. So we'll take I-5, or I-5, 405, and then I-90. get to Spokane by one o'clock so have enough time to get loaded really need to get a lane over Space opened up, taking it. in but that would be the last lane the, the other lane is carpool only so I don't want to really block that lane Seven thirty in the morning I should be the worst of the rush hour I think
scale. Scale in four miles, so let's get over. Back to this lane. Although we've learned, gained a lane on the right hand side. in the center lane a little, a little longer. That's one thing awesome about having a trucking GPS. Garmin Diesel tells you when their scale's coming up. Where you can be in the right lane ahead of time. Not that it's 100% accurate, just an added tool. There's quite a few scales missing, and some places it tells you there is a scale when there is none. Still a handy tool, even with the uh, mistakes in it. That dump truck should technically be in this lane. Scale is closed. Got fire trucks or flashing red lights ahead of us anyway. On the in the median. Maybe I should have taken highway too. Doesn't look like fire truck. Maybe just a tow truck. Tow trucks do use red lights here, so. Yeah, it's just a tow truck. Anyway, this is pretty much what I'm going to see for the next hour or so in traffic jam like this. So I'll catch up with you down the road somewhere. I sure hate it when they do this. 
you look at the road, you see the black lines where the lanes used to be? Oh, good. Oh, no, no, no. I'm like, good, it'll end. No, they've, re they've moved where the lines are. You see where the lanes used to be and where the lanes are now? So the road is rotted out to where the lanes used to be. And wow, is it hard to stay in your lane. The big rig ruts are rutted in perfectly where the lanes used to be. And now the truck is fighting me the whole way. I found the uh, side lane of the slow lane, the far right lane, was worse than the center lane. But the downside is center lane, I've got to worry about traffic on both sides. Because all of a sudden it'll just grab me and shoot me over by a foot. But we are in I-90 eastbound. Definitely holding on for dear life there.
that sign says I was pro I'm prohibited in the far left lane. Don't know if I've read that before. I always stay out of the far left lane anyway. Not always, most of the time I stay out of the far left lane. In, in cities I'll go in the far left lane unless there's signing saying I can't. If I'm empty and I know I'm faster than everybody in the right lane. And there's only two lanes. If there's three lanes I'll never go in the far left. They can't decide who's faster. Thank you, car. I started singling and he moved right over to the far left lane. Oh, they knew the lane was ending and they were being courteous. Got it. lane just gave me a signal a few cars before that honked at me and I'm like what's going on I'm, I'm in the center lane I'm actively passing people none of my toolboxes are open I can't see anything wrong get a thumbs up that car there just gave me a thumbs up and it's like thumbs up oh I'm flying a big Canada flag on the back on Canada Day Got it! I remember this from last year. There's nothing wrong. They're just saying hi. Whew. Okay. All good then. First I'm like, what are you yelling about? I'm gonna run you off the road. What are you? Get the pitchforks out. I'm like, oh wait, they're just saying hi. It's all friendly. Put the pitchforks away. Put the pitchforks away. if you're running next to another guy. So yeah, I've only had pleasant hand signals. I was very confused for a bit there. I've put the pitchfork away. And I'm smiling and waving back now. some blue sky. Delwerg 
coming back to the drier part of the world. Still a little green here, but everything's getting a little more golden. I think we're uh, headed down into Ellensburg, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, this is where we transition from mountains to uh, farmland. Basically, from Seattle to Ellensburg is mountains, and then from Ellensburg to Spokane is farmland, and then after that, we get back into the mountains. like the further east we look the more blue sky way there on the horizon looks like there's like hardly any clouds bright enough I need to put my sunglasses on I don't have sunglasses for the camera sorry you guys grasslands over here but they turn quickly into ground crops and wheat and corn a lot of uh, onion in this area I'm sure they grow potato as well pretty windy out here but it's I'm going with wind Excuse me! Whew. I'm allergic to you guys. I made the mistake last night to go to bed and I left the front window open. All of a sudden I woke up at night with all these buzzing around my head and all these mosquitoes in the truck. I'm like, what? Where did these come from? Get up. Oh yeah, window's wide open. Shoot. Okay, close that window. And then I burnt a mosquito coil for a little bit. I opened the uh, bunk windows which have uh, mosquito netting on it, bug netting on it. I thought there'd be some fresh air going through, but I think I'm uh, still suffering from the allergies of burning in a mosquito coil. So. Traffic revision in 1.5 miles. Okay. So, my bad for uh, leaving that window open. Could have completely prevented mosquitoes in here if I had just closed the darn window. be 
before I went to bed it was still daylight so a light drizzle so there was no mosquitoes anywhere to be seen and I just forgot to close the window. are still open. We're just driving through the ditch maybe. Is there a bridge coming up? Uh, GPS looks like there's a river up ahead so yeah. I bet you they're re replacing a bridge. Oh we gotta slow down. Oh, that's 60. Slow down to 60. I'm doing 60. <laughs> Motorcyclists use extreme caution. Oh, it says motorcycles, caution, rough road ahead. Alright, both hands firmly on the wheel. Let's stay in our lane if the roads are rough. So far, just the ruts fighting me. It's not really rough, it's just rutted out. Yeah, it looks like they're replacing... There's the rough section. Taking off the layer of concrete and they're putting a new layer of concrete in. There's, there's the concrete truck right there, backing up. the ruts. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there we go. Back in the rut. Whew. Now that we're in the rut, I'll go in the back and make a sandwich. The truck pretty much drives itself when you're in a rut like this. For the record, that, that referring to a meme that was funny on TikTok. Not really a meme, but it was a funny TikTok videos. I wouldn't do the Homer Simpson thing and set cruise control and go to the back. But these stories come from somewhere, right? Somewhere somebody must have gotten up and made a sandwich while flying down the highway. Honestly, I think it could be done. Seems like a challenge to me. No, it's not a challenge. Don't try it. Don't do something stupid just because it's a challenge and you think it can be done. Oh yeah, so Ellensburg is coming up here quickly. entering the highway. Because there's a pilot. Truck's 
stop right there. Cool. I rarely come through Ellensburg. Pilot truck stop right there. Let's put that on my list of possible fuel stations. Speeding up. I suspect you're speeding up. Uh, that rude. If someone moved over to let you get onto the highway, stay a bit below the speed limit, let, let the people pass and then speed up. Even if they're going to be going slower than you, let them go, get, let them get back into the slow lane and then speed up and pass them. That's what I do. Big sign said use I-82 to Tacoma. So another step of truck unloaded right behind me at the same time as me and I see him coming up behind me slowly. lights ahead why do we see brake lights ahead Flying J there. It's now a CFN. Mm. grass rest area that's what it's called 
headed down into the uh, Columbia Gorge. If I come through this way, I usually hit record coming through the gorge here because I always find it so beautiful. Everything is just desert dry. And then you got this huge Columbia River flowing through the bottom of the gorge. I stopped here and the other Sutko didn't, it means he's now in front of me. I'm okay with that. The uh, wind turbines are going. So I guess the current problem with all these wind turbines is you often see them stopped. There's multiple reasons why they can be stopped. If it gets too windy, they stop all of them. Uh, one gets stopped every now and then to do maintenance on it. But if you see like half the field going and the other half not, they're stopped because there's no demand for more electricity. So we have the ability to capture more, produce more electricity, but no way of storing it. So having better batteries to store electricity and batteries in the future, and then spread the electricity over the day and night where it's needed the most, I think that's a thing that'll happen in the future. Beautiful ride down. Being empty, I can just kind of almost coast. Got cruise control on every now and then, you hear engine brakes kick in a bit, but for the most part, just coasting. <clears throat> That's good for fuel economy. We'll see what the average liters per hundred kilometers says when we get to the bottom. Still on schedule to arrive right around one o'clock. Be perfect.
close enough to the dispatch to see if it's going to be a tarp load or not, but I guess I'll find out when I get there. Basically, if it's concrete blocks, no tarps needed, but if there's bagged concrete on it, then we got to tarp it. If there's only one pallet of bagged concrete, I ask them uh, to uh, plastic wrap it and then I don't have to tarp it. Saves me time, costs me money, as in I can't make the extra money for tarping a load, but it saves the customer money too, so saving the customer money is more important than me making money. And to be honest, tarping isn't all that much fun. I don't mind it. Pretty darn efficient at it now. But I would always rather not tarp. What was the last Friday? I think it was Friday. The truck driver in front of me was tarping his load and I was tarping my load of uh, the steel shot. And he left the back end of the uh, load open to the elements. I'm like, I went, uh, talked to him, it's like, you realize this is steel shot. If this gets wet, Yikes, a little close there, buddies. I know I ride motorcycle and I, you, you, your sense of space is, because you're so maneuverable, but still, you really don't want to be a, that close to a big rig. And he had a big gap in the tarp at the front too. It's like, the weather forecast is for a lot of rain the direction you're headed. You should really tarp that fully. If if that load gets wet, it's just granulated steel. It is going to rust into one big clump in that bag. And now instead of granulated slag, you got a big block of steel. That cannot get wet. He ignored me, so I'm like, well, I always have a rule. I'll come talk to you first. I'll give you a chance to fix the issue. If you don't listen to me, I'm reporting you to my boss. I had the same rule when I was the boss. If somebody, so I, I used, for those of you who don't know, I used to be assistant manager for many, many years at a big uh, retail store. And uh, many of my employees have begged for me to come back because I treated them with respect. I, I, I always looked at it, which bosses I've had that I hated and which ones I liked. And I tried to be the one that everybody liked. And because everybody liked me, I got people to do more work than the other managers could get them to do. If people like working for you, they'll work harder. But anyway, I had a rule with them. It's like, hey guys, if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to come and talk to you. If it's not a terrible, terrible, terrible thing you just did that's huge against the policy, like stealing or stuff like that. If you just did something that's not quite safe, or you just did something that's not within company policy, I'll talk to you and say, hey, you cannot ever do this again. Technically, I have to write you up for this right now, but I'm not going to. Don't make a habit of it. Don't let, it, don't, uh, don't let me ever see you do this again, and we're good. And most people really respected that, that they had the space to make errors around me. Because we're all human. 
We're all gonna make mistakes. So we need to, if you're a manager and you're the boss, you need to allow your employees to make mistakes. I wasn't the perfect boss, but I think I was a good boss. Let them make mistakes, let them get away with mistakes. If they take your, hey, you gotta take this seriously, you can't do this again. And if they uh, don't take it seriously, and now I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that you're soft, that's when you lay the hammer down. So they, my employees learned very quickly, when I come and ask you to do something, it wasn't a, hey, could you please go do this? It was a, you better go and do this, but I'm being cordial about it, I'm being nice about it. So same with Friday, I'm like, I wouldn't talk nice to them. Mentioned it several times that you really need to be doing this. Ignored me called the boss, took a picture and called the boss and go, hey, just sent you a text. He goes, what? Are you kidding me? He goes, that's downright theft. We're paying him to do a full tarp. He's not doing a full tarp. He goes, thank you. I gotta go call him right now. And I've talked to guys when I was the fire department too, same rule. Um, and I make the same mistake too. I jump out at a lumber mill and start loading a load and I forgot to put my hard hat on or I forgot to put my safety glasses on. You go to the other guy and go, hey, tap him on the shoulder and go, forgot your safety glasses. They turn around, go to the truck, put their safety glasses on. All good, that is the perfect world. We all make mistakes. If I'm ever at a lumber mill and I forget to put my safety glasses on or a hard hat or whatever, if some guy comes to me and goes, hey, safety glasses, I just gained a lot of respect for that person because they came and warned me before I get injured and before like a safety officer comes out and catches me, right? So it's a double win. I don't get in trouble and I'm staying safe. So watch each other's backs. If someone taps you on your back and go, hey, your visor, or hey, it's never to say I'm better than you. It's always you're looking out for the other guy. So huge kudos to those of you guys that, and every now and then someone comes to me and goes, hey, you forgot to, uh, shoot, right? you're right. Let me go get that. Because we all do that, right? This is so beautiful. Love this highway. So allow people to make mistakes, remind them friendly. Hey, you're making a mistake right now. Correct that mistake, cool. Because there's people that come in, lay down the hammer immediately, just raging on you for missing something. I have no respect for you for doing that. None at all. But if you come in and remind me now, if you have to come and remind me every single day, that, that's a different problem. Then we have to take care of that too. I know I've been in non-compliance for my steel toes for two safety checks in a row. Because it's a policy I was not aware of that our steel toe boots have to be six inches tall. So mine were four inches tall and got caught twice now with a four inch tall boot. So I bought new ones. I just didn't have time between the two safety checks to go get boots or I was too lazy to do it. But I have tall ones, I've corrected the issue. So future safety checks, I'll have the tall boots. I really wanted to wear out my old boots before switching to the tall boots, but I switched to the tall boots. I'll use the other boots other places. I 
that steel toe boots have that many other places to use, but I'll slowly wear them out eventually. Steel toe boots are actually decent camping boots. Uh, I like wearing my steel toes when uh, cutting firewood with a chainsaw. So they'll be used like that. Well guys, I think I'm gonna call it here. It's probably another long video. So thanks for watching. I'll get loaded here. Well, still 150 miles till Spokane, but get loaded in Spokane. And then uh, we'll head up back to Canada. See what uh, Thursday brings us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments. Love reading them all. Some of them are hilarious to read, some funny comments, a lot of uh, sharing life experiences from your aspects that reminded you from one of my videos. Love all of it. Thank you. You guys rock. Beautiful, beautiful way of ending the day. Not quite over yet. It's got another two hours of drive time, but getting there. Two hours is nearly end of my day. This is Highway 25. From... I can't even remember what the small town is but basically between 
Colville, Washington and Trail of British Columbia.